Welcome back, Gadgeteers. So, I've been using the ThinkPad P1 with Fedora Linux now for about a year, and I wanted to tell you my thoughts on that particular laptop. So, we'll go through the good things, um, the not so good things, and we'll end with any issues that I'm having with Linux and how I feel about the laptop as a whole running on Linux. So to start with, the ThinkPad P1 of course comes with Windows 10 and I'm really not a Windows 10 user so of course I created a dual boot scenario where I could boot into Fedora Linux or I could boot into Windows 10 just in case I need it. Uh, I haven't found a need for it so I don't really bother booting into Windows 10 hardly ever. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about the good things about this particular laptop. Um, one is it's upgradable. So you can put in both memory and additional SSD drives and they are the small card style SSD drives, not the larger ones and of course they're PCIe so they're considerably faster. The laptop has a full HDMI port which I really like so any old HDMI cable will work out. It has two USB-C ports that I haven't even had a use for yet. An SD card reader which I have used quite a bit with my camera back here um, and a couple other tools that I have. They have an SD card in them so I can just put it into the laptop and quickly transfer the files from the card to the laptop. It looks like to me the chassis is scratch resistant. Um, usually I buy a case, a clear plastic case to put over the laptop. It's still functional, works as normal, but you have a case over the top of the laptop. I did not do that with this one. At first it was hard to find one, then I really didn't bother to check after that. and. My experience has been uh, the case is resilient, so I'm not going to say it's scratch proof. Uh, I don't think any computer is, but overall it works out excellent for me. All right, the keyboard is wonderful. It has a wonderful tactile feel. Um, the keys break at just the right point, so you get a nice palpable click. You don't hear it necessarily, but you feel it and the key travel is very nice. So if you've used the older Mac computers, it's similar, but I'm just gonna say it, it's better. Using this keyboard works great. Okay, so this system comes in at 3.75 pounds. You may say, that's really, really heavy. Uh, for a portable workstation, it's not. For a laptop, yes, that's pretty heavy. But you gotta keep in mind that this system isn't uh, for you to surf the internet on. This is a portable system, portable workstation. It has a very small, very light 130 watt brick that comes with it. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't add very much more weight overall. I'd say it's still under four pounds. The chassis is quite frankly much thinner than I would imagine it to be with all the ports that you have on it. I wanted to mention also you have a dongle for RJ45 so you can get wired networking and that's important for some people who do troubleshooting on actual physical networks. So this laptop has a Xeon 6 core processor and it really surprised me. The reason is when I'm encoding my videos I used to use H.264 to compress them but the video size was considerably larger and when I uploaded it it would take more time. To save money I've changed my internet access so that it's much slower on the upload. I only get five megabits or something like that. It's paltry. So I tried the H.265 and the Xeon processor is well suited for H.265 so it actually creates these very small videos for me and when I upload them it takes about the same time as it used to with my old internet connection that had 20 megabits upload and I don't see any degradation or quality problems and I'm really happy about that. Okay here's the not so good. 
the system has really short battery life, so I get, I would say two to two and a half hours. If you're doing any serious work on it, it's going to be more like an hour and a half. So there's no way you can encode a video without being on power. It's just not tenable. And just using it, you're going to have to uh, rely on the power connection. So I guess if you surf the internet, you might get three hours but beyond that I'm sorry it has a custom power port so the plug that you plug into the laptop is a custom plug I've heard that you can charge it via the USB-C but it's much 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 slower so I always use the provided 35 watt charger the backlit keyboard is a manual so you have to hit the function key in the space bar to turn it on and it only has two settings low and high so if you're used to the Mac where you know it turns off automatically turns on automatically this may be a big change for you so when you're on AC power and you're doing some heavy-duty work the chassis can get quite warm there's um, air intake on the bottom so you want to make sure that the laptop's able to breathe when you're working on it. I'm going to add to that the 35 watt charger that comes with it. The brick gets very hot. My thinking is that uh, basically Lenovo tried to give you the lowest wattage charger that they could to make it as small as possible and the side effect is it gets red hot so if you're charging the battery and doing intensive tasks that thing needs to be on a hard surface and nothing covering it you'll see what I mean if you get one of these so the fan on the chassis can be kind of loud especially when you're rendering a video so you're encoding a video or whatever uh, that is not a deal breaker with me I don't mind it so much um, but it can be pretty loud the biggest problem that I have with this laptop as far as the hardware is concerned is that the speakers are extremely low quality they're tinny they don't have a full range they don't even have a partial range to be honest they're very difficult to hear even if you turn them up loudly and it's really become an issue for me if I'm editing a video because, of course, we have to check the sound levels and make sure there's enough bass, enough treble, and so on and so forth. Possibly apply a filter to get rid of a background noise or something else. You can't do it with those speakers. You must plug in some quality headphones in order to be able to edit your video. I think most people would say, well, yeah, I mean, who edits their video and doesn't use headphones? I get it. But for the money that I paid for this laptop, okay, I got it on eBay for $1,800, but usually it's around $3,000, $3,500. That's a lot of money. And now they sound like crap. I can't believe it. I'm really disappointed. I've got a MacBook, the 12 inch, that sounds way better than that. And that's disgusting. All right, let's talk about some issues that I've had with Linux. So, as you know, I'm running Fedora. Recently upgraded that laptop to Fedora 32. And I did a dirty upgrade, which means I didn't run one of the commands to do an upgrade of the current OS prior to that. But the problems I'm going to discuss with you, two of them are continuous and one is new so let's talk about the continuous problems the first one so when you're using the touchpad to double click it's really pesky doesn't like to always do a double click now I checked in all the settings and there's no setting to change for the speed of the double click which I think might be the issue I think it's a little too fast so what I've done is started using the uh, there's two touchpad buttons if you will left and right mechanical buttons so you can actually click those because of course it has the track point that little red thing on the keyboard that you could use so that your hands never need to leave the keyboard at all so I usually just click the left button to do a double click or even a single click I don't know why that is 
I tested it in Windows and it works perfectly fine. So I think we have a small driver issue and there are some limitations to the setting changes I can make, which is unfortunate. Hopefully uh, that'll change in the future. I'm sure if I tried a different distro, possibly those settings might be there. The other thing that's annoying is at least with Fedora, and we're on 32 now, you cannot run the Intel based driver, which is a power saving video driver. And then when you play a game, it shifts into the NVIDIA card. So there's a uh, built in NVIDIA card as well. <clears throat> so your choices are use the Intel based video, which saves battery life quite a bit or use the NVIDIA based video and install and compile the proprietary drivers that come from NVIDIA. The battery life is literally about half as good so an hour to an hour and a half is really all I could get out of it um, when I was running on the NVIDIA and that was a problem and I wasn't really playing games with it so I went ahead and switched back to the Intel drivers so in Windows uh, the Intel drivers will be used while you're doing normal internet stuff uh, opening word and so on but the minute you play a game it starts up the NVIDIA 3D chip that's on board and of course it's much faster Okay, so this is a new problem since Fedora 32. I was hoping it was fixed with a recent update, but it wasn't. Uh, basically what happens is when I come out of suspend, I lift the laptop lid up. You'll see the screen light up and it'll be kind of black, you know, but you can tell the light turned on. The fan will ramp up to full speed and that's it and you cannot use control alt f2 f3 f4 to try to get a command line so you can just shut the thing down so the only thing you can do is press the power button wait 10 seconds shut it off bring it back up i've had this happen one time since i've done a uh, update on fedora 32 not the original upgrade but an update so I'm hoping it's going to be solved soon. There's many more updates for Fedora 32 already, and I'm going to try those again. It's not a huge issue because 90% of the time when I lift the lid and it comes out of suspend, it's perfectly fine. You're good to go. But that one time can be an issue if you're editing a video or you have an application open that doesn't have an autosave feature, you could have a problem. Um, that hasn't happened to me yet and one of the cool things I like is I use Firefox and of course when you first launch Firefox after a reset like that uh, it will tell you that you know it can restore all the tabs you had open and usually I need to do that uh, I may have 10 tabs open so it's very helpful for me to have that functionality overall on Linux everything's wonderful as far as the touchpad goes, I use a mouse much of the time, and therefore I don't worry about touchpad issues. But if I do use the touchpad, the double click still works and the click still works on the pad itself, just not perfectly. And of course, the uh, two physical buttons, mouse buttons, left and right, are there, and you can click those as well. So if I don't have a mouse, that's pretty much what I do. Updates have worked fine. I think I've taken this thing from Fedora 29. I'd have to go back and look at my videos up through Fedora 32. And that's quite remarkable. If you think of Windows 10 and how much of these huge changes they make, the fact is I know they stopped their numeric naming at Windows 10 so they could be like OS 10, which became Mac OS shortly after. So I don't know if we're going to have Windows OS soon or Win OS. But uh, the fact is we're really like on Windows 16 or 17. And they're massive updates where these updates, if you're doing regular updates and then you decide to upgrade to the next version of Fedora, is very linear. It's not like a massive change. It's just the next update for your system. 
if you're waiting on the other hand like I do sometimes eh, there can be a lot of changes I actually jumped one I think maybe that's when I went to 31 from 29 man my memory anyway uh, I jumped one of the upgrades on Fedora and just went ahead and jumped it and went to the second one Fedora 31 and it worked perfectly that is a bonus I don't think you could do that in Windows I know you can't do it in Windows there's so many things Windows won't let you do the GUI is wonderful I'm using KDE so a lot of people don't like KDE and I've heard somebody say wow that really smacks of Windows 7 or Windows Vista and okay I understand if you feel that way but I really like it I like the kind of glass arrow interface the flat um, look of Windows 10 I don't like it so you get to choose what you want your interface to look like because there's just so many desktop environments out there that you can choose from and I really like that I haven't had a performance issue either on my Ryzen 2700X or my ThinkPad P1. They've both worked perfectly fine except for those issues that I mentioned on the P1. Would I buy the ThinkPad P1 again to operate it on Linux? Definitely. It fills what I needed. I've taken it to the hospital with me. I've used it as a workstation there. I've edited videos there. It's really, really worked out well for me. So some people, they might prefer something different, but if you're running Linux, this is a good laptop. There is one disappointing problem, however. It appears that Lenovo has decided to discontinue the ThinkPad P1. I know that much. I have not looked at their website, so I can't tell you if there's a P2 or what the story is going to be. There was another iteration the ThinkPad P1 version 2 and it had a newer processor in it. I think everything else was the same on it. So if you can get one used, it's a great deal. I got this one instead of paying, I think it was 3500 or 3000 I got it for 1800 so that was a really good deal. And this was almost a year ago. So if you're thinking of doing it and you want to put Linux on it, don't be afraid. It should work just fine and do everything that you needed to do. You could wipe out Windows if you wanted, but hey, if it was up to me, I probably would do a dual boot. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short video from Fast Gadgets. If you did, like and subscribe. If you really did, visit my Patreon and consider throwing me a buck a month or more. And what will I get with it? I always say a cup of coffee, but um, what can you get for a dollar? Well, I'd have to save it up. Then I could get something computer related. I do have something coming that's computer related, and I'm going to make a video for that a little bit later in the week. Thanks for watching. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.